Good morning, Your Excellencies. Good morning, everybody. Your Excellency, Madam Alimetu Omut, State Minister for Women, Children, and Youth. My daughter, Marianne Ahmed from Nigeria. Your eloquence is very exciting. Your Excellency, Asifa Bekele, a very distinguished chair and moderator. Thank you for your generous introduction. Ianville, thank you for your inspiring speech. Your Excellency, Muhammad Diakete, President of the Senate. Your Excellency, Lamine Sise, President of the African Wide Movement for Children. Your Excellency is all present. I'd like, on behalf of our chairperson, Dr. Musa Fakit Mahamad, to thank you all for involving the African Union in this very important encounter on children. Children, we are told, are messages from one generation to the next about itself about our values, our norms, and our traditions. Children are down payment for the future we all aspire for. Therefore, the quality of childhood in Africa today is not just a reflection of who we are as a people, but also a clear indication of an Africa we want and hope for and hope to bequeath to our children. And that is why it is opposite at this moment to acknowledge the work of Prime Minister Abiy Mohammed and to celebrate with the people of Ethiopia and bask in the glory of his Nobel Prize, the mother of all Nobel Prizes. Congratulations to Ethiopia. We in the African Union, for us, Building of an Africa fit for our children is front and center of everything that we try to do. But unfortunately, armed conflicts waste the promise and the investment we make for and in our children. Apart from depriving our children of parents, of their caregivers, and the basic social amenities, their health care and education, Armed conflicts are estimated to have claimed the lives of millions of children as forced participants or victims, many of them physically maimed, sexually abused, psychologically traumatized, while others are held hostage and trafficked. Once the conflicts end, children have special short and long-term post-conflict needs such as tracing family members, social reintegration, psychological and social rehabilitation programs, participation in disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration programs, as well as within transitional justice frameworks. But we cannot recover their lost childhood and their lost innocence. It is for these reasons that over the past two decades, our continental body has been committed to addressing the challenges of children in armed conflict. A groundbreaking development in this regard was the establishment of the African Committee of Experts on Rights and Welfare of Child in 2001, organized by the Organization of African Unity, now the AU, to promote an effective continental framework for advancing children's rights. Since then, Your Excellencies, there has been multiple initiatives undertaken by the Union independently or in collaboration with regional or global bodies as well as our cherished partners like Sweden, the EU, to put an end to this scourge of armed conflict across the continent. Since the inaugural celebration in 2001, for the commemoration of the Day of the African Child has been promoted as a platform for the consideration of children caught in the plight of war. And through this platform, 
The African Union has tried to harness opportunities to mobilize attention and action of member states and the global community as a whole towards considering and addressing the manifestations of armed conflicts on children. The theme for this year, Humanitarian Action in Africa, Children's Rights First, once again sought to drive home the urgent message and the need to mainstream the children's rights in the determination and implementation of priorities for humanitarian action in conflict theaters across the continent. Progress has been made on the legal and policy fronts. Various continental and national human rights normative frameworks have been signed and ratified, such as the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, the Convention on the Specific Aspects of the Refugee Problem in Africa, the Kampala Convention in 209 on IDPs, the African Charter on Rights and Welfare of the Child, and the AU Convention for the Protection and Assistance of Internally Displaced Persons in Africa. But Your Excellencies, those are just the normative frameworks. Our Peace and Security Council, our foremost body charged with considering and advising on the security situation on the continent, has on a number of occasions, most recently during the 841st meeting, considered the issue of children in armed conflict and issued multiple statements that while seeking to highlight the plight of children, also seeks to provide strategic perspectives for the consideration of options for addressing the myriad challenges confronting children in armed conflict. The above review of activities illustrate the African Union's commitment to addressing the issues of child rights including those of children in armed conflicts. The United Nations Secretary General's report on the promotion and protection of the rights of children in 2019, for instance, notes, unquote, notes, quote, children continue to be forced to take an active part in hostilities, including to carry out suicide bombings against civilians. Others were used in support roles, for example, for example, as sexual slaves or human shields, unquote, in a number of countries, eight of which are African Union member states. The fact that the use, exploitation, and abuses of children in hostilities have persisted despite global consensus and action is perhaps an indication of a broader set of challenges confronting the African Union, including a lack of respect for international and regional laws, decisions and policies, impunity for grave violations, shrinking hold of state control and influence over non-state actors, the rise of violence, extremism, and insufficient funding capacity for sustainable long-term reintegration and rehabilitation programs. It also reinforces the reality that matching the challenge may require a consideration of the linkages between abuse of child rights in conflict situations and the root causes of this conflict. At the 841st meeting on 16th April 2019 of our Peace and Security Council, we considered this and underscored the importance of effectively addressing the root causes of forced displacement and we urge member states that are facing conflict and crisis situations and those hosting refugees or displaced persons to expeditiously find political consensus, means and ways of effectively resolving these conflicts and crises. The African Union is happy that the number of armed conflicts in Africa has reduced considerably. But one conflict is a conflict too many. As the African Union prepares for 2020 as a year to silence the guns, we have prioritized four key areas for engagement and investment in order to protect our children. These areas are one, visibility and voice. Two, integration and continuation. Three, accountability. And four, capacity 
to increase the capacity of the Commission and our member states to address the root causes. Your Excellencies, allow me, at the risk of trespassing on your patience, to quote a Lebanese poet on children. Khalid Gibran, he said, speak to us of children. Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, yet they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls, for their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. For life goes not backward, nor tires with yesterday. You are the balls from which your children, as living arrows, are sent forth. Your Excellencies, thank you for your kind and polite attention.